Long ago, the people of Bastia and the Sentinels came to an agreement of using the land to grow crops and food for their own, and to survive the harsh war of the Anthem. The idea of cultivating the lands would help with dwindling stock back at home, and would allow the current people of Bastion to never worry about running out of food when times got rough. But this idea never succeeded thanks to the Scars, who, for the very first time, mounted their first organised attack that decimated the land and prevented all future development of cultivation. The Battle of Crop Terraces is a well known lesson to the many as to why you should never leave an unknown force alone and why the Scars population must be controlled no matter what. So, what do we know about the skirmish from long ago? There is not a lot of record available to state the year took place, major players involved, and the general thought of those affected by the situation. All we know is what resided in the event, how it was dealt with, and the aftermath of the long forgotten skirmish. With that being the case, let me give you a short end version of the event from the core text entry called the Crop Terraces. The Battle for Crop Terraces is the most significant Scar skirmish to date, in which Scars mounted their first organized attack against a human settlement. It was a long and bloody battle, resulting in the total decimation of the fort's crops. Antium sent supplies and troops north, but had difficulty crossing enemy lines, causing extra hardship to those in Fort Tarsius. After the hard-won victory, it was decreed that the Scar population must never be allowed to grow that large again, and so, bark hunts became a necessary and dangerous practice for lancers in the area. The terraces haven't been cultivated since. That was a shorter version of the event, which shows the Iskari got two larger numbers, which led to an Iskari being formed. The Iskari then planned out a large scale skirmish against the humans by attacking their resources. The Scars achieved their goals, but were defeated by the Sentinels. Bug hunts were made active within the area to cultivate their growth. And the terraces never were used again. This event led to the first encounter of us seeing the Scars fully organised to this degree, since most encounters of them were brutal head on combat but nothing too strategic, which would probably be the reason as to why no one decided to watch over them, since if they fought like savages, then what would make you think they'd be highly organised? As well as the Scar's change in tactics would notice, this was also the first encounter of us seeing a Luminary in action, which showed how bad the situation was if they didn't get it under control. A quote from the Cortex Junkhead Basin indicates that, after the terraces were destroyed, Fort Tarsus decided to be more proactive managing Scar swarms. A combined force of Sentinels and Freelancers assembled to destroy the construct in the basin. Upon arrival, they were met with a new discovery, an intelligent Scar with technology built into the skull, earning it the name Junkhead. Junkhead is considered the first official Scar luminary. The situation went from bad to worse for the people of Bastion, since not only are they dealing with the rising Scar population, but now a new and intelligent threat capable of leading armies of Scars at their whim, and could also protect themselves well. Of course, this seemed like it was all based in one area at the time. However, from reading other bits of Cortex about the invasion, I noticed it was a lot more larger than I thought. From Hope Valley to Crop Terraces, this entire area, from what I can guess, was invaded by the Scar from some of the Cortex reports, which technically is true, but from looking at the end game map, you can see that there's a lot of ground taken which describes perfectly as to how chaotic it was, and also with the elevation of the map, so that the Scars were fighting a uphill battle, while the Sentinels were being pushed further and further back. For the Sentinels, they made full use of the retreatment through automated sentry turrets that are now long inactive, and the Sentinel vengeance the grenade launcher, which allowed them to stop advancing movement of the Scars while allowing the Sentinels to regroup and defend Fort Tarsus at the final wall. It seemed that the area was heavily defended, but not enough for stopping the Scar's advancement, although we managed to put a stop to them and dwindle their numbers. However, it sadly took a number of lives in the battle, from citizens, guards, to the sentinels. Wars always bring the ugly side of the world. No one asks for it, and yet it happens. It brings only death and destruction in its wake. In today's time frame, the terraces have recovered from the battle, but have long been abandoned by the people as the area is still under threat from the Scars, and also from the Outlaws now, but only a few encounters have been noticed from them. The Sentinels still operate within the area, and have been in some skirmishes with the locals, but not nothing they can't deal with. But the area has now lost a major foothold in history, for providing enough resources for the people of Tarsus to live on. The tragic event has left too much of a scar, no pun intended, for the people to come around and try again. Although, I did hear a local vendor was looking into growing crops inside the fort as an alternative. So everyone, that is the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed it. 
I do hope we can get some more smaller instances of past events, both good and bad for us to explore. And there's so much land within the game that have bits of info about them, but seem to have no story around them, nor is it fully explored nor explained. Just bits of info. I trust Bioware would live on this area. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub and share for more future content in the near future. And once again, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.